Hello, welcome to Japanatron. My name is Dave Pavlina. Japanatron is a podcast all about life in Japan and Japanese culture. Today, I want to talk about internet service in Japan.、Uh, it's kind of complicated. It's one of those things that often, you know, people who come here to work, to live, blah, blah, blah. It's hard to get your mind wrapped around it because,、uh, at least coming from the US, it's a little bit different、uh, the offerings and the setup and all that. So,、um, I want to break this up into three parts. I'm an organized anal bastard. So,、um, first, I want to talk about landlines. The landlines. Then, I'm going to talk about wireless internet options, some things with the wireless.、Um, and then, I'll cover maybe some last options in part three at the very end. This is going to be an informational one, another information. I'm going to provide some information. And I'm going to talk like this the whole time. No, no, I'm just kidding. My voice is as, as annoying as it is. I don't think I need any assistance there. All right. So, landlines. Let's talk about this. Landlines,、uh, internet line, landlines in Japan can be a bit complicated because they break it down into two parts. There's, there's often two providers involved.、Uh, there's one, the physical line provider, and this is pretty much always NTT or KDDI. They are the ones running the physical line to your house, physically connecting you to the internet. Then, number two is the ISP. This is the company that provides the internet services over that physical line. You know, think of this as the service that you can't physically touch. It's your IP address, it's your DNS, it's your email services, all those kinds of things that、um, not physically get you on the internet. Okay? So you follow me there? <laughs> Good. I hope I didn't lose you. Now, fortunately,、um, it's gotten easier over the years, and most providers, you know, they handle both applications for you. So even though you're going through the ISP, Um, which I'll get to、uh, for your application. They will often apply on your behalf to NTT and KDDI to get the physical line stuff handled for you.、Um, so that's kind of nice because you can just deal with one entity, usually the ISP.、Uh, now, here's another confusing part with landlines there's all these plans and shit. And、uh, all these marketing terms, and I can't figure out what the hell they're trying to sell me. Okay. So let's, let's break this down into what I know. Okay. And if you know more, God bless you. Please write in, let me know, or start your own fucking podcast and, and, and I'll listen to it. Okay. Types of lines and plans. Here we go.、Uh, we got fiber. Okay. They often call this hikari, right? Light.、Um, that's your fast one, your fiber optic connection.、Uh, as, of, as, of this, uh, as of the date of this podcast, you can't really beat that, I think. Uh, and then you got DSL, digital subscriber line. That's a slower.、Uh, usually, you want to go to fiber if you can.、Um, then there's all sorts of types of plans. There's these mansion plan, house plan, NTT East, NTT West, blah, 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 blah. And the prices are different, and you don't know what the fuck is going on here. Okay. Now, the simple thing here is really the type you get doesn't depend so much on your own decision as it does on the building you live in. So, really often you just have to tell them your address,、um, and they're going to check on your house and what your building supports, and then they can recommend the plan. Okay, so that kind of makes the decision easy because it's, it's really not up to you. <laughs> it looks like it is, and it's complicated, but it, it's, it's not so much up to you as it is to where you're actually living.、Um, so, I, like I said, I usually just contact the ISP, they'll ask for your address, and then they'll run a check on the building, and then they'll say, okay, you can get this or this, you know. And this greatly simplifies the process because, you know, when you first see all those options, it, it is a bit overwhelming. Okay, now I'm going to do a little rant here. Um, they often try to throw in like Hikari Denwa, which is an IP phone, or Hikari TV, which <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> what is Hikari TV? <laughs> This is a、uh, internet TV? I don't know. W- what a crock of shit. Just, you know, just use Line or Skype on your phone, and then boom, you have IP phone. You have Hikari Denwa. So, Hikari TV, I mean, Japanese TV sucks anyway, so why do you need this shit? Um, I mean, do you really want to watch more? Oishi! You my! Oishi! All day long, fuck it. Just, just get the internet, okay? And, and don't fall into that trap of Hikari bullshit stuff.、Uh, because really, you can, you can get all that stuff for free with apps like Skype and Line, okay? So,、uh, they're gonna try to sell you on that shit and just, just say fuck you <laughs> with a smile. 
All right, ISPs. Uh, there's a lot of these. There's a ton of ISPs in Japan. Uh, but like I said, really only two physical line providers. Now, I, I can't cover all the ISPs, of course. Um, I'll just tell you which one I use. It's called Asahi Net. Um, and uh, you get a discount um, if uh, you sign up with my code or whatever. So I'll, I'll give you to that. I'll give you that stuff in the comments if you're interested. Um, I, I've been happy with them. Uh, they've been great. Uh, it, they were actually a friend's recommendation, and this this particular friend runs his own phone and uh, internet kind of line company. What he does is he sets up offices with the, uh, their internet service and uh, their phone service and all that stuff. Um, so his recommendation meant a lot to me. So um, I've been happy with them for a number of years. So I'll give you that stuff. I, I don't want to turn this into an advertisement, though. So that's the landline section. Okay, uh, and really, uh, the last thing I'll say about landlines is the main reason I have one is just because my my geeky IT needs uh, require it. Um, I need a static IP. I need some crazy level of bandwidth. I need unlimited data. You know, I don't want anything like getting slower after eight gigs or something like that. Um, so I need I need insane speed and whatever, but. If you're a normal person, um, let's move on. And <laughs> let's move on to uh, section two. This might be more for you. Is let's talk about wireless routers. Now, I would totally use this instead of uh, the landline. But like I said, I run servers out of my house, and I require an always-on, dependable connection, hardwired, uh, static IP stuff like that. If you're a normal person, you could probably get away with this wireless router stuff. Um, and let me tell you about the advantage of this, uh, which. I've always been kind of fascinated with it because I'm like, man, if only I were a normal person, I would totally go for this. Um, the coolest thing I like about these things is they're not connected to your house. If you move around a lot, uh, it's not one of those things you have to worry about setting up again. You know, whenever you move house, uh, you got to set up your internet connection again. You got to cancel the old one. This one is just a little portable router and you could just bring it with you wherever you want. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, it, the other thing I like about it is it's one company. It could even be the same as your mobile phone provider, you know, like uh, AU or uh, Docomo, you know, those those big guys. Um, so you could just get one of the wireless routers under your same, you know, plan you have for your mobile phone. Uh, like I said, it's also portable. You could take it to the cafe. You could take it on a domestic trip. You can use them internationally, but you'll pay for data roaming, much like you do for a phone. So I don't really recommend that approach, but... Um, that's kind of cool. The portability is really cool. Uh, the technology is maturing, so the speed is getting much better than it has been before in the past. I mean, they used to sell these things with 3G, blah, blah, blah. Now they're up on 4G, LTE, all that, all that you know, high, spe high speed shit. And uh, so it's getting better. Um, now the difference between uh, the landline and the wireless is actually is narrowing, which is kind of cool as the technology is maturing. So... Uh, that's another advantage of these wireless router things. Um, I even tried, uh, my office has a few of these, and I tried taking one home and borrowing it and just connected it to my home firewall uh, to see if the firewall could see it and that I could share the internet connection uh, with lots of computers, and it did work. Uh, my home firewall just saw it as a standard USB network adapter, so that was kind of cool. Um, for all intents and purposes, it's just almost the same as a landline. Um uh, but, but, da, 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 dot, 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 let's talk about the disadvantages, the but. Um, number one disadvantages with the wireless stuff is they're going to put you in the, the two-year auto-renewing contract just like a mobile phone. Uh, you know, I talked about this two-year shit with uh, the mobile phone episode, the one before this one. Um, that kind of sucks. Uh, you got to note down, you know, the month that you signed up for this thing, because if you ever want to cancel it and avoid an almost hundred dollar, you know, 10,000 yen, I think it's 9,500 yen is usually the standard going rate for canceling this crap out of contract. Uh, you got to remember the month you signed up. Okay. So if you're really organized, you know, two years later, remember that month and go in there and cancel it, or you just keep renewing forever. <laughs> That's how they get you. Uh, so that's kind of the bummer part of it, but I mean, a lot of people are in those contracts any with mobile phones, so they're kind of used to it, but that doesn't make it right. <laughs> um, another disadvantage is there, there are more restrictions and limits. Like I said, landline is, is almost limitless internet, essentially. 
Uh, the wireless is not. Uh, they'll give you, they'll say unlimited internet, but it's actually, when you read the fine print, it's actually 8 gig a month or something. Um, now, your internet, will, your internet will still work after going over that. It'll just throttle down. It'll get much slower. So, okay. There's that. Um, some VPNs won't work on it. I don't know what the hell's up with that. I remember the guy telling me about that, and he's right. Some types of VPNs just don't work. Upstream performance can suck, so that means if you're running servers out of your house where upstream makes a big difference, you know, people are connecting to you, um, uh, then that could kind of suck um, because you're your servers just aren't going to be very fast. You, you don't really want to run servers out of your house with this wireless stuff anyway. I, I'm guessing the majority of people don't do that kind of stuff. Um, that, that would be for you. Uh, then there's some kind of... Sometimes they're missing options, like you can't get a static IP, which is important for geeks like me. Uh, there'll be a limit, like five devices connected to the thing at once. You might be able to work around that, like I said, with connecting it to a firewall and sharing it through that. Um, so, yeah, there are some disadvantages. Uh, I think over time, a lot of these restrictions and disadvantages, these limits, have relaxed a bit. So they're not as bad as they used to be. Um, the wireless providers. Um, as you might have guessed, the, th the three major guys, Docomo, AU, and SoftBank, offer these wireless things. Um, there's also uh, Y-Mobile. I talked about them on the mobile phone uh, episode, the previously e-mobile. Um, they kind of resell SoftBank's infrastructure, I believe. Um, they have pretty good prices. They started selling these data card things, these wireless routers. Uh, so they do a pretty good job. They're, that's the one I use at my, my office. Um, their pricing is pretty competitive. Um, they do the two-year contract thing, though, again. So uh, even though their pricing is decent, yeah, uh, they, they pretty much, all the big guys, including Y-Mobile, does that two-year contract thing. If you want to uh, if you want to avoid the two-year contract, um, another name came up last episode is B-Mobile. Um, I talked about them again um, on the last episode. Uh, they resell Docomo service, um, and the contract is optional, like it is with their mobile phone service. They'll sell you just the SIM. You can also buy Wi-Fi routers directly from them, and they're unlocked, which is kind of cool, because uh, it means you can you can leave uh, B-Mobile, and you could still use the router on another service if you ever really wanted to. Um and so the only thing I fear is that B-Mobile's data speed isn't really great. It's pretty bad, actually, on my mobile phone. So I, granted, I've never tried um, B-Mobile with their with the wireless router, but given the performance I have on the mobile phone, I don't know if I go with it because you know you you kind of want better data speeds with that stuff because you know you're using it with a computer a tablet, and you, you kind of have higher expectations for your data speed. So, uh, I don't know about that. I mean, I'm thinking, I found actually a good friend of mine, uh, the same friend actually who told me, you know, he was the one that, that, that was using, like, data-only phone with a wireless router for a while and kind of made fun of me for for not, for wanting emergency services. <laughs> uh, the same friend, he's, he's obsessed with mobile phone stuff, and he, he gave me some um, alternatives to be mobile. Um, some other SIM-only providers, um, and I'm thinking I'm going to blog about them in the future, um, just for my own reference as well. I think it's easier to write a blog about them, but stay tuned for that. So there are there are alternatives to be mobile, which I'll get into uh, in a future blog article. All right, that's your Wi-Fi, your, uh, your wireless router stuff. Let's talk about some other options, some alternatives to, to the landlines and the wireless routers, um, if you're kind of a hippie that way. Um, number one, if you really want to be minimalist, um, you could just use tethering on your mobile phone. And it basically, this will turn your, uh, your mobile phone into a wireless internet route, router, and you can use tethering. Um, if you use B-Mobile, tethering is often disabled. I noticed it on iPhones, but then sun suddenly it's, it works. You know, like they'll relax that restriction and it'll start working again. But, you know, it's kind of just up to their whim, you know, if they're going to allow tethering or not. And it seems that iPhone is the one that they're always like, eh, we didn't want to allow this. 
uh, but with the you know the Google Nexus, the Android phones, they seem to be a little bit more liberal with the tethering. Um, so you could um, you could just use tethering if you want to be really minimalist. Then you just have uh, you just have your mobile phone and you use that for everything basically. Um, then there's your Wi-Fi hotspots. You know you often get these thrown in as a bonus with a mobile phone contract. You know the big guys will give you. Uh, free Wi-Fi in all these, you know, various locations, cafes and shopping centers and all that. Um, you can't really rely on these consistently, especially if you move around a lot and you have, you know, you, you have data needs that involve constant checking wherever you are, which is most people, unfortunately, in this, this era of, of smartphone zombies. But um, I don't know, you could, some people are really <laughs> fucking cheap, they could possibly rely on on just Wi-Fi hotspots. You know, if they're located in places and they're included with your mobile phone contract um, that, you know, they're available to you, you could just rely on those. Um, sometimes, often I think of these as just kind of holding you over, the kind of internet that's holding you over until you get some more permanent solution. Um, you know, the NTT one is a common one, but, you know, Cafe offers SoftBank, so you could get screwed because you have an NTT Wi-Fi you know, free Wi-Fi with NTT on your phone contract, but then, you know, that cafe down the street is, is SoftBank only or something stupid, so it, it's hard to rely on these consistently. Tokyo Metro, actually, the, the subway system here now offers free Wi-Fi, <laughs> and, you know, it's cool. It's free. It works well. Uh, I gotta hand it to them. That's generous of them. Um, it's kind of dumb, though, because... <laughs> I connect to the fucking thing, and you know, you enter that you don't enter like a, a an email address or something to authenticate to it. And I'm on the platform for like less than thirty seconds, and the fucking train <laughs> shows up. So I, I don't really understand the point, unless you're in the train near the platform, like on a in a cafe or something. Which I don't really know of that situation. <laughs> I'm never in that situation. Um, cause I'm always on the platform for like less than 30 seconds by the time the train comes. And by the time I've logged into it, uh, then, uh, I have to get on the train and it, it does cut out between stations on the train. It would be really cool if they just had it on the train. Uh, why don't they just offer the Wi-Fi on the train? That would be totally badass. Um, another option, Skype Wi-Fi. Skype has a service. Uh, you can use your Skype credit, uh, which is nice cause it's all under one account. Um, and it will, they will partner with a number of paid Wi-Fi hotspots, um, and then you can just pay for that using your Skype credit. Um, I used this for a week or two, and in my experience, it was a ripoff. I don't know what the fuck happened here, but suddenly, like, all my Skype credit is gone after, like, surfing the internet for, you know, like, 20 minutes or something. <laughs> they give you the price, okay, at, right before you log into it, and... It just doesn't add up to me. I don't know what the fuck happened. Their clock, their Skype's minute is not my minute. I don't know what the hell's happening. I got rid of that thing because I just thought it was a ripoff. I thought their timer is fucked up and they're trying to rip me off or something, you know. So I gave up on that. I don't know. Your experience may differ with Skype Wi-Fi, but uh, I don't know. It might be worth a try, but I didn't have a very good experience with it. Um, free Wi-Fi is often in many cafes. Um, sometimes they want you to register with your email address. Um, so a lot of the free Wi-Fi stuff. Um, don't give them your real email, of course. Give them some, you know, secondary, ter tertiary email that you use for junk. Um, because they're probably going to spam the shit out of you. <laughs> so by all, do, do not, do not, for God's sakes, give them your real email address. Give them some bullshit one. And do give them a real one because you're probably going to have to click some link, you know, to uh, to uh, verify that, that bullshit email address. So don't just make one up like fuck you at fuck you dot com uh, because they're probably going to send you some verification email. Um, so that's the free Wi-Fi stuff. Um, if all else fails, f final note, final note on this, if all else fails, um, just search for open Wi-Fi in your apartment building, you know. Um, I used to have decent luck with this um, in the past. Unfortunately, now, 
many routers uh, that that people just buy and set up without thinking actually come pre-configured with the password protection turned on. They used to not, and it would just be an open Wi-Fi, which is awesome for for for, for fuckers like me that to just uh, leech off other people's internet. Uh, but now, you know, they're cracking, yeah, the, the manufacturers have gotten smart with it, you know, and, and people have complained because they don't know how to set up a fucking Wi-Fi router. Um, and now they're enabling the password protection by default. So, although I will say some people actually turn it off. They just don't want the inconvenience of having to enter a password for their own Wi-Fi, which is fine with me because then I can use your Wi-Fi for free as well. Um... And if you have Wi-Fi, be careful with that. Set the fucking password, because some asshole like me is going to be leeching off your internet. All right, that is internet service um, in a nutshell in Japan. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Let me know your comments, your questions. Uh, Give me your likes. Uh, Give me your five-star ratings. Anything other than that, don't do anything. (laughs) Just just keep your mouth shut. (laughs) Okay, I don't want to hear it. Um, All right, talk to you later. Toodles. Receive this transmission from the Comedy Podcast Network. For more shows, visit comedypodcastnetwork.com.